Close Brace for JavaScript developers by JavaScript developers. Here we are with another episode of 5 Minute React. Last time we installed Express, our web server. Today we're going to take a look at the top level files that were generated and go over what they're doing. First, let's add the entire folder to Sublime and save it as a project. Click the project menu, then click Add Folder to Project, and choose your music list folder. You'll see that the contents of the folder show up in Sublime's sidebar, which is handy for rapidly opening different files. Click the project menu again, choose Save Project As, and then pick a place to save your project file. I use a Sublime Projects folder in my home directory. Right, now we have a list of files. We can forget about .gitignore and readme.md for now since we created those ourselves. Let's start with package.json. It's simpler than app.js and we already talked about it a bit in tutorial 5. At the top we've got our name and version, then a private boolean, which is currently set to true. This isn't really important unless we're planning on uploading this to npm's database. After that we have a scripts section that allows us to type yarn start to start up our app instead of node.bin/www. Finally, we have our third-party dependencies. We're going to be adding to this list in a future tutorial, but for now it's just the various modules that Express needs to run a basic web server. Now let's take a look at a more complicated file, app.js. Go ahead and open it up. If you've never used Express before, this is going to seem a bit overwhelming, but remember that this is the central nervous system of your app. Considering that, it's actually pretty short. You might also notice that it's not using ES6 syntax. Express Generator hasn't quite caught up yet. We're going to quickly convert it in a future tutorial. Okay, lines 1 through 6 are loading up various modules that the web server uses, first and foremost, Express itself. If you look around, you can see these in use elsewhere in the file. For example, in line 4, we require a module called logger, and then we use it in line 19. Lines 8 and 9 get information from a couple of route files Express generates just as a getting started measure. These files tell us what logic to run when a user requests a page. Remember, all web server interaction is request and response. We'll be working with those more in a future tutorial. Line 11 creates an instance of the Express server and assigns the variable app. Lines 14 and 15 tell Express, using the app variable we just created, where to look for views, and that the views will be written in EJS. That first one's a little weird, but basically what it's doing is using a third-party module to say, hey, we don't want all of our URLs to look like musiclist.com slash views slash albums. We just want to use musiclist.com slash albums instead. But you still need to look in slash views to find the template files. Lines 18 through 23 are a big lump of configuration for our web server. We'll uncomment the fav icon line later and talk about it then. Setting our logger to dev provides more robust messages to our console during development. The next three lines are used to parse incoming request bodies, i.e. the stuff the browser is sending along with the request, such as JSON data or cookies. The final line is similar to our views folder above. It's saying serve anything in the slash public folder without putting slash public in front of it. So, for example, slash public slash images slash high dot jpeg would be located at musiclist.com slash images slash high dot jpeg. Lines 25 and 26 are important. These tell the app which route files, defined above on lines 8 and 9, to use for which URL paths. One route file can handle multiple paths. For example, you could use the users route to show an index at slash users and a profile at slash users slash starlord. This is the only section of app.js we're likely to work with much, since we'll be adding URLs to match the API endpoints we want to expose. If we were building a very large API, I'd probably break this out into its own file, but the music list API, at least in this tutorial, won't have too many routes, so it's fine to just keep them here. By the way, all of these app.use lines are what's called middleware, which means functionality that happens in the middle of the request. Basically, things that are done before the request is delivered to your code. Lines 29 through 33 are an example of inline middleware rather than middleware that's contained in its own module. This is our 404 middleware. Note that it's below the routes on lines 25 and 26. This is important. Those routes end the request and send a response. If the request doesn't match any of the routes, then it falls through to the next middleware function using the next variable, which is internally defined within the Express app. Since none of the routes succeeded, the next middleware it hits is our 404 middleware, which sets our error to, well, a 404. It then uses next to bounce to our overall error handler, which makes up lines 36 through 44. This final bit of middleware prints the error out to the page, and can be called either at the end of the 404 to print the 404 not found error, or by the server when any other error happens. 
Note that it'll only print the error details if our environment is set to development, which it is by default. We'll explain changing the environment in a later tutorial. Finally, on line 46, we export our app variable, which is our express app, to which we've added all of these settings and middleware. Okay, this is getting long. Swing back next time and we'll take a look at what's going on in the bin, public, routes, and views folders, and how it all comes together to make a website. Thank <laughs> you.